excited to chat with you. So tell me, what's going on with Zaylan? Because there's just like, she broke out of prison. She's like set on revenge. But now like, it seems like it, there's just so much going on for her. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff going on for her. And um, I think this whole season for her is a lot about discovery. Um, because, I mean, you saw in the first two episodes, she is a completely different woman than how we've been introduced to her in season one. Yeah. Um, and kind of understandably so, I mean, she's been on this mission for a good part of her entire life. And to have it all just be taken away from her, completely left with nothing. I mean, she said it at the very um, end of the season finale in season one, she's like, I have nothing left. And that's exactly where we see her in episodes uh, one and two until the very end of two, no spoilers for anyone yeah. who didn't see it, but maybe <laughs> check it out because a little bit of the old uh, Jalan came back, so. <laughs> you know, but she does begin having visions of her sister, you know, being like, is that guilt? Or is that because it's, it, or was it the, the necklace that held held it all in? I think there's a lot of, a few things going on there. And when I talked to um, the creators of the show, Bob and Christina, um, part of it was, it was part of herself talking to herself in the same way. I think it also is a part of uh, Paleen as well in the way that Paleen manifests to Nikki. But a lot of the conversation, the way that I took it and internalized it was this was her own guilt, as you said, and her own conscience uh, coming back and telling her, you got to face what you did if you ever want to have any hope of moving forward and and having a life outside of this so yeah like the thing is so Zalan blames everything on Russell Tan you know what is it about him that she so she believes is the fault of like her life crumbling because wouldn't she still want revenge against Nikki instead because Nikki prevented her from getting that power I I don't know if it's so much um, Nikki, because I think there's so many different forces at play that prevented her to get the power. And at the very end, it was actually herself that got in the way mm -hmm. because she wasn't able to manifest it in an appropriate way with being good. As you saw with Nikki being able to let it go, that was actually the purpose of it. That's why she was able to let it go. And I was defeated is because I couldn't, nobody was supposed to have that power. Mm -hmm. And I was misguided in thinking that I, it was, it belonged to me, to Jalan. Um, so I think what, when it comes to Russell Tan, the reason why she has such a vendetta is because he destroyed her family and he destroyed any hope of her being able to meet her mother. Um, I think she has a lot of guilt and she places a lot of that on herself because her mother died in childbirth, giving birth to her. But ultimately what led up to that sickness and to Jalan being crippled was the greed um, behind Russell Tan and what he did to her hometown, to her whole family, what he's been doing to the world. And this is just how she's been able to justify in her head. She's like, well, I'm getting vengeance for my family is mm -hmm. the number one priority. And then on top of all of that, it's like, he cannot get away with this. And I think it's the seeing his grasp on the world, not just, you know, in her own personal world, which is definitely the driving force behind all this, but seeing him kind of grow and expand that and ca like capitalize on that is just a driving force for her enragement, like this guy can't win, he can't keep winning. And so as much as maybe she has issues sometimes with Nikki, at the end of the day, it's always been about Russell Tan. Yeah, well, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And right. everyone seems to be going against, um, like seems to be going against Russell Tan. And so um, I know um, you, the thing is, that's when Mia comes into play, you know, and Russell Tan wants Mia and, you know, Nikki wants to protect Mia. But Zalan knows that she needs to destroy Mia because that's what he wants the most. So are we going to see kind of like them kind of teaming up, but also fighting in a way? Because this Mia is the only connection that Russell Tan truly wants and either has to be destroyed or saved. Totally. Um, what you are going to see coming up is a really fascinating dynamic between myself, Nikki, and Mia. Mm -hmm. Because aside from all of what you said, the logistics of it, we are all tied to this um ancient bloodline mm -hmm. me you know being a guardian her nikki being a warrior and then mia being both and that bond and that tie is an incredibly powerful thing so it complicates the relationship quite a bit because mm -hmm. i have like you said i have this idea i gotta go in and, and and destroy this girl um because that's what he wants the most but that bond is it comes in and plays quite an important factor in the relationship. 
I got to see the third episode. Every, everyone's going to see the third episode by now. And we see Kerwin's back with, like, we see, yeah. well, we knew he was back, but we see them see each other. Um, and, you know, she's just shocked. He's shocked that they thought they were both dead. Um, and, you know, the tension, you could feel the tension between two, but you could still feel the emotions that they have for each other. Where is Kerwin in Zalan's heart right now? She still loves him. She, mm-hmm. She's always loved him. But for her, um, when it came down to it, like she has a lot of trust issues, right? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> again, kind of rightly so. She's, the woman has been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the poor woman. Um, so when it came to the decision last year, when she thought that she had to get rid of him, like ultimately the thing that she's been going after the most is his father. Mm-hmm. And he is his father's son. So as much as she loved him, yeah, she can never trust him. She doesn't know because as she feels a strong tie um, mm-hmm. to her, her parents who are deceased, right? Is what yeah. we saw. And if she's kind of comparing apples to apples of like that kind of uh, blood loyalty, you know, paling aside, <laughs> um, it's just, you know, you, you, she can't get that out the back of her head and to have him go along with her and to see everything that she's doing, um, it cannot get in the way of this vendetta and this mission she has to get rid of his father, because that is what is most important to her. And so when it came to what was going to win out, it was her mission versus her love for him. Well, the thing is, when a mission is complete, then they have no purpose afterwards. So ultimately, if Jalan succeeds in taking Russelltown down, what will be her purpose? What is her end game? And then does she feel like she could continue or she could let, like you know, die now? Or she does she feel like I could go back to Kerwin? So I, I think that's what we're seeing in this whole discovery of the season is exactly that. Because we're seeing her that she's already stripped of that purpose in the first two episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, because she's like, well, I, I, how I thought I was going to defeat him is completely gone and taken away from me now. So how do I do this now if I can do it? Mm-hmm. And what I, what I loved about um, when, when we first had a discussion in the beginning of the season of where she's going, one of the words that was used for her, well, she's going to be a lot scrappier this season, <laughs> which I absolutely love for her because last year we kind of saw her, she's all like regal and put together and she's mm-hmm. just got, she's always a step ahead where this year it looks like it's more, it's a true like race mm-hmm. to see who's going to get where first. Um so she's figuring out as she as we go along. So we get to see that in the discovery process of her for this season. Well, there's another woman in Kerwin's life right now, and that's his sister Juliet. Are we mm-hmm. gonna see these two baddies interact? Maybe. <laughs> because I imagine when I when I watched the episode, I really I I love Juliet. Like I feel like she's such a badass. And it was the same feeling I had when I first was introduced to you. And I was just like, why am I so into these bad girls, like these baddies? <laughs> like I'm like, you know, I'm a I'm a Zalan forever person. And so and that's why when Juliet, I was just like, I want them to be best friends. But can you tell me that <laughs> dynamic that because we have these two powerful like, I'm not saying evil, but they also, they're very motivated. They're very Slytherin. I don't know if that's a way, the best way to describe it, but they're very I'll, ambitious. I'll take any Harry Potter reference anytime. Yeah. Like, keep them coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're very, they're both ambitious. They're both, like, driven. And they they will do, and they're not like Nikki, where Nikki has a moral compass of, like, oh, this is wrong no matter what. But they will be like, no, if it helps me gain what I want to do, I will do it, even if it's, like, bad. And I feel like those two have it, like, Julia and, and Jalan have that. And so, for me... I feel like they would be amazing best friends or they would be like frenemies. But I just want to know, like, can you tell me a little bit of that interaction? Like, at least tell me, like, I know maybe they don't fight or maybe they become friends, but is there some kind of what's the tension between them? Yeah, I mean, I think she doesn't like Jalan doesn't really know very much about Juliet. Mm -hmm. Um, She she knows pieces of it from what Kerwin has told about the family, but Mm -hmm. she also gets to understand a lot more um through you know because Jalan is very resourceful and she yeah. does again as we go along the season as new information comes comes up like her ten, her ability to get information and understand what what is happening is not gone so Jalan is incredibly sharp when it comes to the dynamics of that family what's happening with Nikki what's happening with Mia she she will percolate it and get that all together um so the dynamic between her and Juliet, I, I think you're right on the money. It is going to be very interesting. So mm-hmm. without giving too much away, yeah, we'll eventually see a run-in with them. 
um but yeah stay tuned it's it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be fun <laughs> yeah and like I'm like I can't wait to see you guys interact that's my when I got to know her I was and then like just knowing your character's personality I'm just like oh man I want to see these two either work together or kind of like be some somehow interact and be in each other's lives somehow because it's just so great to see like and two badass women kind of and like who who are Slytherin very Slytherin and it's just great to see that inter that kind of we have a variety of people of villains like that and we have a variety of heroes you know so I really appreciate that but a, as you were telling me about Jalan's source of like resources and she, all that stuff do we ever learn her source of income? Because she has access to money, to guns. Like that was a really expensive looking sniper rifle. Um, she still has amazing fashion. She got a haircut. She looks good. Like the bangs, I'm, I'm like digging the bangs. Like, Thank and you. She, like she has like, she has, it's the, and she has a new bike, a motorcycle. Do we ever learn the source of her income? Because, you know, I know she was a businesswoman before, you know, before and she sees her like runs into her sister again and that in inspired her to get the weapons. But do we what what how does how does she fund all this? Well, that's never re quite revealed. And I don't want to give away too much because who knows, hopefully there's a season three and we don't know, maybe we'll see even more of a backstory. So I don't want to give that away. But I think even her being in uh, the business world before was mm -hmm. kind of an access and gateway point to understanding Tan's world as well because mm -hmm. he has this company that has a global reach. As we said, you know, last year, it's financial and banking and every, he has his hands in everything. And I think it was a way for her to get access to that, to understand that as well in her mm -hmm. vendetta against this man. So yeah, she has she has friends in high places, I think. Uh, she has resources. She wasn't completely destitute as we saw, like even going to jail. I think she's incredibly smart to know how to save away certain things and put things in certain hidings. and. You know, she doesn't put all her eggs in one basket. So she's not completely down and out. Um, and as far as like where she gets that money from, you know, we saw that she has some kick ass skills. So I know uh, the assassinry comes into it as well. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm just like, like when she, she just got out of jail, and I'm just like, she looks good. She got a new outfit, you know, she got a new haircut. I'm just like, where does she get the money? Like it's it's, it's like I because like your your character was a businesswoman, and the thing is like I really love that your character had a backstory before we got to know her. You know she was in business and uh, business world, and yeah. you know she was doing well, and she goes to visit her uncle, and she runs to her sister, and then that's what started kickstarted this. Are we gonna see more of that backstory? Because I think it's interesting to see Zalan before she became driven to revenge for revenge. Because yeah. for me, I, I, I'm always intrigued when we got to know your character and her backstory. I love that it was, it gave her so many layers. And like, I've always wondered, I'm like, I want to know about her, what she did in, in before she became like driven by revenge, because I feel like her life is so interesting. Your life was so, your character's life is so interesting. Are we going to get more of the backstory, more and more of her relationships? Because Kerwin couldn't be the only person in her life before. So I would love to see her past come back. Yeah, I and I loved her past too because that really gave me something to hold on to because, you know, I've talked to other people about this. Um, I, I can't play evil for evil's sake, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of the stuff she does, yeah, is very morally ambiguous <laughs> to say the <laughs> least, but it all stems from her past, what she's gone through and how she has had to deal with that. And she's just a person who's been kind of set on this trajectory for a lot of a lot of tragic events as you know that happened to her and you will see um bits of her past come back within the season um but yeah i i absolutely i adore her her backstory because it gave me a lot to hold on to as an actor to play her well olivia hinted that nikki and jalan, uh, jalan have a climactic moment at the end of the season like it's emotional and it she said you know made her go into tears what can you tell me i know it's only been three episodes in but what can you tell me, at least your emotions towards that scene that you guys have in the final? I know it wrapped up, so you could, you don't, and you don't have to tell me anything about it, but just the emotional aspect of it for you. I mean, for me, for the finale, there were so many great moments with Nikki, with other characters as well in the finale for Jalon that was such, oh, it, it, it felt like such a tumultuous, um, emotional 
release for her for so for so many reasons I sobbed oh. <laughs> I sobbed when I read the finale um and I sobbed on set multiple times too because of those interactions so yeah Olivia's not wrong there is this beautiful beautiful moment between her and Nikki that just had both of us in tears um that I think will be really gratifying for the audience mm -hmm. to say and that's probably all I can say yeah no of course and like I mean hashtag Zicky for me for life like, <laughs> um like that the, yeah the, my, when she told me that I was just like Zicky is, is, is Zicky because I love Zicky and so she knows that I'm like waiting for all that information oh, that's but, been like a thing for both of us on set like every time we're in a scene together, like hey Zicky like, you know, like, we're like <laughs> It's all from you, Laura. <laughs> yeah, like no, it's like, and like I, like I've, I've been obsessed with these two interacting, but now I'm kind of like, uh, like uh, Jalan and 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 Juliet. I'm kind of like, like thinking what their friendship would be like um, after getting to know her, um, and and then knowing your character. Even though, like, the thing is, even if Jalan takes out Russell Tan, then Juliet will move up. So it will be win-win no matter what for Juliet. Even though, like, you know, and so I feel like I would love to see them, them like. I, don't know, I just in my head they're like best friends going and killing people together <laughs> like um and so but for me i i do want to yeah that common would be interest. a friendship <laughs> common interest of like power and stuff and so that's the thing like and they're both business women so that would be great for them but i am zicky forever but i do want them to have a friendship but the thing is they still have paling in the middle you know between them um is there truly a resolution where jalan, jalan will ever be redeemed because the ultimate and the thing is when she told her sister I don't regret it and and then also like you know she killed her sister like in cold blood and she uh, like I know maybe she has said that out of like because she was like, out of anger but it's hard to forgive someone who killed like their sister and like so her sifu is there ever a redemption for uh, Jalan or Jalan kind of like no I just want to move on with my life I think we're just starting to see the beginning of the journey. And I think in a very human way, um, people don't turn the 360 right away. Things have to take turning points and events have to happen for them to realize why they should have regretted what they did or that there was a different way to do things. And so in that moment, she's still very much like, she's like, I'm in prison, like, leave me alone. I, I haven't even come to grips with being defeated yet. And now you want me to go on this whole new path of like trying to find out which she does when she breaks out of prison. That was kind of uh, mm -hmm. the, the way of showing that, okay, she's on she's on something else now. Um, but it, again, it's more like she can't get away from her past yet. It's, mm -hmm. it's still such a haunting thing for her. And there's so much that has not been resolved for her because what she's gone through is really traumatic and that mm -hmm. does not unravel and be unpacked. Um, over you know a few months of however long she that she's been in this in this prison and and kind of been able to stew on it um, she hasn't really accepted it yet so for her she's you're gonna see that she still hasn't let go of it but slowly that there will be moments and times where we see her start to change um, and to and start to see and have a different perspective on the world and and what she's actually doing uh, through the interactions that she has with the characters on the show yeah my thing is with um, Jalan is that you know like a part of me is like I want to see her continue but I also love the idea of um having this anti-hero aspect of her if she does join the Shuby gang which I call the Shen and the Scooby yeah. put together. I like that That's yeah so name. I call them I call them the Shuby gang um mm -hmm. and I I can imagine her being like how uh, being part of it in a way but also still an like an anti-hero where it's like the Punisher like no matter like I believe that we could kill to get our way but I will help you and I, can you imagine your character being part of that? Or do you feel like there's no way that she is her own person? She'll never accept that kind of lifestyle. I think there's definitely a potential for that. And what I do like about it is because she could probably do certain things that Nikki can't, mm -hmm. right? Um, like for example, we've we seen in season one, I can use a gun, Nikki hates them. You know, <laughs> like it's just one of yeah. those things where uh, when things, when things really need to get done, I'm probably the, gonna be the one that could step up potentially if that were to happen. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's impossible. I think that there's definitely potential for that and there might be later in their season, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, because we all know like Nikki and Jalan are definitely obviously gonna meet up again a few yeah. times and you'll start to see if that dynamic could actually lead to more of a, uh, a partnership, a camaraderie down the line. 
Well, I am interested in her relationship with Mia because Mia is both worlds. Um, and your character is a guardian. And um, for me, I like the idea that, you know, I always said that the whole story is around Nikki and her family. Nikki is the one. But now with Mia being both, um, it kind of, for me, it kind of like, it's it, who is the one? Where is their place as a guardian? Where is their place as warrior? Because now we have one person who is both DNA. For you, what does she represent for the story? Because we always have this like the one and then you're like the villain who like who antagonist now because I feel like you're not lo no longer in that aspect of like the villainy because um, Russell Tan is the ultimate but I feel like you're an antagonist to to Nikki. Where do you feel like Mia is placed for your character and for for the story? I think quite fittingly because I'm the guardian, Nikki is the warrior, Mia is both. She's right in the middle of both of us, mm -hmm. um, and you're the audience is going to. Um, get a very rich story behind even more so with the warriors and guardians which i absolutely love because it's kind of like we touched based on it the first season but now we get even deeper into that world to see what exactly that is through mia mm -hmm. um so for that dynamic yeah there's there's going to be a bit of a push and pull um because she's both of us so she can see things from my side she can see things from nikki's side and that kind of leaves her as a, a question mark like a really tantalizing question mark of what's going to happen between the three of us in that dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I do have a, like two more questions because I know you have to get going soon, but okay. your character um, has all, has resources. So she has so much, so many resources. I know it's impossible to get to Tan, the Tan family. And I ask you this too, because I'm like, you know, uh, uh, you know, your character has all the money. He could easily dispose of the, the Chen family like in a snap, like with, or ruin their business at least. Why hasn't Jalan, uh, like Jalan done that? If she has all the resources, she could just be like, how many dumplings? Go. Like, oh, Ryan's like, um, Ryan get into residency? Go. Like, is there a reason why she, she hasn't like really gotten to the big picture of like, I could easily take down this family, but no, I'm gonna <laughs> take it slowly. I think there, there is something to be said about just being smart and not just destroying for destroying sake, mm -hmm. um, so to speak, because I think like when you start doing that, you're just getting sloppy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, she, as much as she wants to take this down, she also wants potentially to have a life after it. So yeah. to, to kind of do all that just seems like she's not gratuitous in any way. Mm -hmm. um, meaning that, yeah, she has these resources. She has a lot less this season as we saw so far, mm -hmm. um, substantially less. And at the same time too, she's just kind of like, who are these people? She can take down Nikki anytime. Like the, the Shens and stuff, she's not even really concerned about. Like her whole focus in her world is like, let's just go after the big bad. And if she gets in my way, I'll take her down then. But right now I've got to spend all my resources in trying to get him. And he mm -hmm. has way more resources than I do this year. Like yeah. we saw, like his reach, his his wealth and everything is beyond anything that Nikki and Jalan have mm -hmm. times, I don't know how much. <laughs> so for her, it's like, okay, where am I going to uh, manage my resources and where are they best used? And that's towards Russell Tan. Well, I've seen your training videos and your fight tutorial and you're, you're kicking ass. It's amazing. Like, I love it. And since you've had one season under your belt to do the fight training and learning all the moves, how has season two been for you regarding the terms of like fight choreo and just like the movements? It's definitely improved for myself because I would say season one was a huge learning curve for me because I've never done stunts before ever. Mm -hmm. So I remember the first couple of days, I was like, oh my God, like I, getting just even two things down took a long time because my brain just didn't work that way. And so now having one season under, and then I trained in between, I just took more like Muay Thai lessons and stuff just to kind of stay as sharp as I could. Yeah. Um, it was definitely easier this year, but still challenging because the stunt team has this beautiful choreography and they always challenge us to do new things because it is very story driven. Um, and they're really great at creating these unique, unique sequences all the time. So it's just, it's always fun. It's always challenging. And like, they're amazing. They're just amazing teachers. So thank God for them. <laughs> and thank God for my stunt, uh, Double Aaliyah. She's fantastic. Oh, that's she fantastic. She looks so good. <laughs> well, are we going to see her get that moral compass change? Is she going to stop killing people? Like, is she going to have that, that moral change too? Because you said that, you know, she, 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 she grows as a, as a person. And then, yeah. you know, the last, the third season, this past season, this past episode, we saw her kill a guy just <laughs> trying to get yeah. through. Just, but then, you know, easily an army. Yeah, event. like, <laughs> yeah, like, we don't need them. We don't need them in our lives. But she yeah. was able to just dispose of them so easily and like, and kill them versus Nikki was like, no, we can't kill anyone. Um, but we know they're going to work together. 
and it's and it you know good always triumphs over evil like that's just the standard and so are we gonna seek like a like we're gonna see some changes in Angelon, but are we gonna see some moral changes or is she it's old habits die hard i still think i think you're right in saying old habits die hard but the purpose of why she does those is changing and so i think that's where we kind of find the nice middle ground is that she's she's not stripped away of all of her bite Mm -hmm. um you're gonna see a lot of more fight left on her and like the you know hopefully what everybody loves about this character is what I love is that you know like you said she goes for it she she gets what she wants so old habits die hard you're still gonna see that but you're probably gonna be rooting for her a lot more because of the reasons why she does it you know mm -hmm. um so I guess that's all I can say <laughs> well you know I've been a Jalan stan since day one I'm just like Thank who you. is this beautiful person <laughs> and like badass so and even sweet. looks good in prison outfits. What the heck? Like that's not fair. You're way too kind. You're I was like, that is kind. not fair. Like I, when like you came in, I was just like, this is not fair. Like no, she still looks so kind. good. And like, but this yeah, but sweet. no. And I, one more thing is, are we gonna see any scene, any more scenes? Because uh, Kerwin left. Um, but are we gonna see more scenes between the two? Of uh, maybe a shirtless scene of him with her. <laughs> <laughs> what of those? What of those? Um, maybe. Uh, I'm, a, I'm asking for the people, and I'm the people. So I just... <laughs> okay. well, for the people, um, you will see more Jalan and um, Kerwin scenes. Yes. Okay. Whether they're shirtless or not. Uh, yeah, just, I'm, I'm asking for that. Like, he, I mean, we had one for the third episode and I'm grateful for that, but I'm just like, it'd be nice. Like, like it's just nice. <laughs> I hear ya. Yeah. yeah, for the people. <laughs> for the people. Like, I'm yeah. included, but it's okay, yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, understood. But yeah, thank you so much for your time and everything. I'm so excited for to see more episodes. I'm so excited for your character. Um, and all the, all, the, all the amazing stuff that's happening for your character in you. So oh, thank you. And thank and, you so much for the support of the show. And like all your interviews are so much fun and it's so great. Oh, like, no. You're fantastic. We love you. So no, I, you. no, I adore you guys. And like, it's funny because I think um, like uh, my friend was like, I think you, you're you rooting for Jalan more than what the heroes of the story, <laughs> Laura. And I'm like, Laura's probably like thinking she's the hero of the story. And I'm just like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I love I love them all, but I'm just like I, I just I have a kinship with your character. I'm I love like, it. Like you kill someone, I'm like it's okay, it's okay. She she like she, she like they probably deserved it. Like except 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 yeah. Simon, except Simon because that except is Mike Bow. So Mike Bow, Mike Bow. I love Mike Bow. Yeah, so I'm Bo. like, but yes, but I wanted that to one hurt. <laughs> that one hurt me. I was just like I might I might have to like a little bit of hate, but I'll come back. I'll come back. It's yeah. just like oh, oh okay, like yeah. I did try to make him live, but then he came after me again. Uh, I, I won't try to justify. I'm just trying to justify it in my own head. I'm like, because I really liked Mike Bo. I liked Simon, and I'm like, uh, that one hurt. <laughs> that one hurt me too. But that was the only time I felt like a dip of my my love for Sean. Other than that, I'm like, I still I still love her. Like she has her reasons. I will defend her. It's it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a really unhealthy relationship I have with her in my head. But Not unhealthy. <laughs> Yes. Well, thank you so much. It was great ch chatting with you. And I will hopefully talk to you soon more about as her art, her art goes, because I need I to, that. I have so many theories and I can't wait to go over it with you guys. Great. Love it. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank I really you. appreciate talk to you soon. it. The activist directors, comments and the lectures, fanboys, professional artists and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard not lying. Comics, movies, and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen, hit play, so check this.